Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of course, I say good evening to those of you joining me here on the east coast of the U.S. It's still evening for those of you in the uh, central time zones, I guess, just getting after 4 p.m. central time. Of course, good afternoon to those of you joining us in the mountain time zones or the Pacific time zones. We, of course, want to say good evening late night to those of you maybe joining us from across the pond in parts of UK or parts of Europe. And of course, good almost early, early morning if anyone's joining us from parts of Asia or Australia. Welcome to today's presentation, a discussion on fighting the fear and embracing the greed for 2018, a look at how we can protect our gains going forward into the unknown of the new trading year while still being able to take advantage of further growth and still be active traders. Now, for those of you who don't know me, of course, my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options and at Radioactive Trading. We'll get a little bit more in the introduction to myself and why I'm here educating you in just a little bit. Now, once again, welcome to the webinar. What are we going to cover today? Well, let's take a look at where we stand at the end of 2017. It's been quite an interesting and amazing trading year for some of us. Others of us, it might have been extraordinarily lucrative. And so some of us, it might have been an up and down roller coaster depending on the strategies we took, the timing that we used, and what sort of instruments we invested in. I want to talk about what is ahead for us as investors moving forward into the next trading year. And I want to show you how you can trade with no fear moving forward into 2018 while still being able to realize more gains if the strong market continues, generate income, still be an active trader. But of course, there are also ways to realize more gains, generate income, and protect what you have if the market does turn. And we'll take a look at that as well. Now, as I promise a little bit about me, my name is Mike Chupka. I'm a relatively active options trader. Now, what I mean by that is in my personal portfolio, I trade probably four to five different options strategies and several positions open in each individual strategy. I have uh, my account structure set up the way that I want to with different option strategies. We may talk about that a little bit later. The reason why I say relatively active is because I don't day trade options. I have customers that do. That's not what I do personally. I'm not trading weeklies on a consistent basis, looking for the four or five day trades, just closing the positions on Friday, looking to open new ones on Monday, closing them on Friday. Generally, I like to go two to three weeks out in time with those types of shorter term positions. Now, I'm a really active options educator. Now, every week, I essentially teach two to three webinars on different strategies and different concepts. I answer probably about 15 emails per day, seven to 10 phone calls per day, plus bar, blog articles as well, covering all different scenarios, management techniques, position structure, and more. My real trading experience is in many strategies. I started out back in 2001, and like many of you, I started out just being able to trade covered calls, buy calls, and buy puts. I traded naked puts for an extended period of time, standard collars. I do credit spreads currently with a portion of my portfolio, debit spreads as well. I traded iron condors for a while. I moved away from those when the market turned about two and a half, three years ago. I was tired of rolling the bear call side as the stocks continued to move up or the indexes. I've traded a lot of diagonal spreads, straddles, strangles, and a lot more. Of course, tons of experience on analyzing risk versus reward and analyzing different structures via the emails, the webinars, and the phone calls we received from Power Options customers and radioactive traders. A little bit about the company. Now, Power Options was created in 1997 to be a one-stop shop for self-directed options investors. We support patented search, research, and analysis tools for over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. Of course, we're constantly enhancing the tools based on customer feedback, new investment vehicles such as increase in weekly options. SPX now has Monday, Wednesday, and Friday series for expiration. And there's a whole bunch of new different types of two times, three times, and ultra short, ultra long ETFs and so forth with weeklies and non-weeklies that keep coming out available as well. So we're always enhancing the tools, 
enhancing the products based on customer feedback and the new vehicles as well. The radioactive trading was developed by a man by the name of Kurt Frankenberg in the early 2000s. Uh, he lost money after taking a course on how to trade covered calls, spread positions. The first two months after he went out into the market, after paying 3,000 some odd dollars for that course, he ended up giving back more than half of what he initially started with. But he didn't give up and he looked for a better way. And they developed the radioactive trading techniques. Of course, Power Options and Radioactive Trading partnered up together in 2007. Myself personally, Ernie Zrenner, who created Power Options, has been trading options since uh, <laughs> late 70s, early 80s. And other staff members here at Power Options do trade the radioactive techniques in our personal accounts, and we have since 2007 and 2008. Now, about you. I want to launch a few quick polls. We won't spend that much time on it just to get to know you. I want to see where you stand right now and what you are looking forward to going ahead. So these are completely anonymous. You know, we won't point out any of the answers. I just want to see what where everyone stands. And the first poll is pretty simple. What kinds of options strategies are you mainly trading right now? And you can answer multiple ones. Are you looking at mainly just trading stock only? Is your focus on income positions, covered calls, naked puts? Are you focusing on spread positions, meaning you're looking at bear call credits, bull put credits, credits and debit spreads, maybe some others in there as well? Are you doing combination plays, meaning you're trading condors, butterflies, four leg, five legs positions, or are you more into the risky trades, naked calls, ratio call spreads, and more? Okay, so we have uh, most of our audience is voting. I've had the poll open for almost a minute. We're going to leave it open for another uh, 12 to 15 seconds or so there. Uh, someone just commented in, none of these really apply to what I'm doing as I'm legging in and out of positions on a consistent basis from condors to butterflies to broken wing butterflies to long calls to straddles to strangles. So constantly moving maybe four or five different options on a stock at a time. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and close the poll and we'll share the uh, results very quickly, everyone. Interestingly enough, now we could answer multiple. This is going to be way above 100% uh, rating, but 100% of you are doing the simple spreads. That's great. I do it too, as I mentioned, as part of my portfolio. 50% uh, of you have stock positions. 50% uh, are doing covered calls and the cash secured naked puts. 50% uh, of you are doing the combination plays and condors and butterflies. 33% of you are maybe selling naked calls, doing ratio call spreads, more complex and riskier strategies as well. Okay. All right. Okay, so let me just follow up real quick here. Let me hide that. Let's just follow up with our second poll. And I'm just going to skip the second poll. I'm just going to go right into the third poll. Let's just be curious, okay? Ballpark, how well did you do last year? Is your portfolio from where it started in 2017? Are you up more than 30%? Are you upward between 20 to 30% from where we started out? Are you maybe in the 10 to 20% range of portfolio growth over the last 12 months or so? Um, are you at about break even, maybe a 5% gain, maybe a 3% gain, some profits, a little bit above break even? Okay, this is an interesting mix here. Again, I've had the poll open for about 20 to 25 seconds. Just about have all the votes in. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. We've had the poll open for about a minute. I'm going to close the poll and let's share the results with everyone. All right. So 17% of you, your portfolio is up 30% or more over the last year. Fantastic. 33% of you. Your portfolio is up between 20 to 30% in the last 12 months. Fantastic. The 17% of you, uh, you're up about 10 to 
the last 12 months. 17% of you have some profits in the strategies that you're trading, but you're a little bit above break even. And 17% of you currently say you don't get it, you're losing money, and you want an explanation. Okay, no problem. Let's go ahead and hide as well. It is a problem. I don't want to see anyone in those bottom two ranges. By the way, I'm at about 19% with my total portfolio, so I'm kind of in the third and fourth range, just banging up between those two. So that's where I am with the four or five different strategies I trade. I was hoping not to see anyone in the last two groups, but we're going to show you how we can help and what we can do moving forward. Okay. All right, let's hide that, and let me make sure the new view comes back up and let's move forward. Now 2017 was a great year for bulls and we can see here there are some opportunities where the bears probably had a good day as well. Meaning that I know over the last 12 months we saw some dips. This is broad based SPX of course. We know we saw some other dips in the NASDAQ but right in here, right around May there was a little dip there. It was quick, probably spiked to volatility. Bearish returns could have been seen in this area here, just going into April through March. And of course, we saw some dips later on around August as well. Now, we know this was a good year for bulls. We know we could have just done maybe one or two consistent strategies that had a bullish basis and done pretty well. And we'll take a look at some of that in the discussion today too. But regardless of what we saw in the last 12 months, can we expect the same thing to continue for 2018? Well, that's the million dollar question. It's the great unknown. We can expect continued growth based on the results of things such as tax reform or other policies. Perhaps that can spur economic growth and perhaps that will actually promote growth in earnings. We could see the opposite. We know this. Any outside black swan event could cause market fluctuation and even drastic market fluctuation. There's rumors of bubbles bursting, economic changes as a result of policy or non-policy. We know that that could happen as well. So it's the great unknown. That's where we know where we're headed. Now remember, about two years ago now, the beginning of January 2016, as we were heading into that new trading year, a couple months before, we saw a dip in August and September, right? Just below about 1,900, then a run up. This was an SPX to about 2,100 in December. Remember being at my in-laws house for Thanksgiving and the fears came out about oil and other areas. And then going into the new year, we dipped down from 2,100 near that high in December down to the 1,800s to February and March. Now over that really 30-day period from January 1st to February 2nd or so, the Dow was down only 5.5% to start the year, but that's pretty significant. S&P 500 was down 5%. I was reviewing an old article today where on average, it was from the CBOE, but on average investors lost about 6.3% in one month. Now that doesn't include leverage positions, spool put credit spreads, iron condors, where one loss, if you realize the full loss from a sudden unexpected decline on a bullish spread, could have wiped out 10 or 12 previous trades, maybe two to three months of work, or maybe one and a half months of work, but it would have taken it down much more significantly, especially if you had five or six bull put spreads open or bull call debits even, okay? So what we're talking about there is in that first start about two years ago, here is that decline from about 2100 down to about the 1800s. There was that August and September dip, came right back up, then it went down. Saw another dip here later on in the summer too, and then later on heading into 2017, I'm sure you remember that, the end of December going into January, and then of course we saw what happened afterwards. Now, I'm not predicting that that's going to happen in the next 14 to 15 days. I'm not predicting that it's going to continue just to move straight up lower left to upper right as we've seen in the past several months for most broad-based indexes as well. But why are we in the market? Well, raise your hand if you're in the market to lose money. That's not why we're trading. No one's doing that. We're also not in the market 
to give back a significant portion of those 30% gains some of you saw last year. 33% of you were between 20 to 30%. We're not in the market to give those back. We're not in the market to see a successful trading year reverse on us and become a negative year. Because as investors, interested in the market, interested in the dynamic abilities of options traders, the multiple strategies, the different risk reward ratios, conservative versus aggressive inside each of those complex strategies or not complex strategies, we all have the same underlying goals. We want to make profits consistently, but you never want to over trade or over invest. Okay, that's a key point. Uh, the 17% of you that had mentioned that you had lost money in the last year and you want an explanation why, one thing of course may be proper position sizing. Make sure you never over trade and never over invest. We need to control losses and limit losses, especially on leverage trades. But it's hard to trust stop orders. Whether you're doing a contingent order on a spread to close the position if the debit to liquidate that credit spread is two or three times what you initially received, you may find you're getting out of, closed out of positions too soon within the first day, two days of the trade, and too often. And that's going to ruin your overall return going forward. Even on long calls, if I'm buying calls speculating on strong market movement, whether I'm going in the money or I'm buying out of the money with more aggressive speculation, if I put a stop on the position, at say 50% loss. Well, a shift in volatility, a decline in volatility, or any type of movement, the stock might only move slightly in the opposite direction, but I might trigger that 50% loss in the leverage position, and I'm out of the trade, only to see the underlying go back up to where I need it to be to be profitable on the position. And of course, we're greedy. Let's be honest. In the email I sent today, it's good to be greedy, but it's also great to focus on good greed and what we mean by good greed is wanting to take advantage of further gains but controlling the risk so that we don't give back what we've gained the hard-earned money we earned in the last 12 months or even the last 24 months we don't want to give that back that's good greed we want to control it we want to lock it in and we want to move forward while still being able to receive further upside now, we had returns all over the place, and we had, of course, multiple strategies being used from our investors. Okay? We know about covered calls. We know the risk-reward ratio there, and that was 50% uh, of our audience, and 50% of the audience was also doing spread positions. We had investors doing other. But what I want to take a look at right now is what we call the trade simulator tool at RadioactiveTrading.com. Now, this tool simulates a trading record based on a win ratio. That should be incorporating, but incorporating expected wins and expected losses based on a strategy. Now, what I mean by that is that we all have reasonable expectations of what we should see in any of the strategies that we were just referring to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm at RadioactiveTrading.com. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Resources tab. And there's a link here to get a 14-day free trial of Power Options, but I want to go to the Trade Simulator tool. And this is a simple interface where we can plug in what our expected target return is for a strategy position, what our expected loss would be on average over time for that particular strategy, probability of winning and losing, and essentially, we'll just take a coin and flip it 100 times. Heads, we reach our target return. Tails, we unfortunately hit a loss. It'll be based, the winners and losers will be based on the probability of loss. And we're going to take a portfolio at about $10,000. Now, to start, let's say I'm interested in covered calls. And I'm going to say that if I had a $10,000 account, I might open three covered calls each cycle. 
Now, if I'm doing weeklies, of course, I'm going to expect a lower return, but let's take a standard, kind of average return for a monthly covered call. The average percent return, if assigned the max return, would be about 3%. You're going to generate 3% of income. That's your downside protection on the trade. Now, you might follow some of the old rules from Investor's Business Daily or so forth and try to set a target stop at about 7%. And we're in a good bull market, so you figure you're going to be right 70% of the time. So you only got a 30% probability of loss. Okay. Well, here down below we see the trading record, the outcome of wins and losers over that time, allocating 33%, let's say, to three trades or so. And we could actually allocate 100% to increase this. So each cycle we opened one covered call with a full investment amount of $10,000. But if I'm expecting a target return of 3%, investing about 3,000, 3,300 each covered call, and I set my stop limits at 7%, if I'm right 68% of the time, that's a winning track record, over time, it's still not enough to profit long term. In this scenario, I'm actually going to need to be right about 73, 75% of the time in order to profit long term. Well, let's cut this down a little bit. Let's just do 50%. So I was going to open two trades, average about $5,000 into the stock and call position for each cycle. We get to 67% winners with this ratio, 3% max return if assigned, setting a stop at 7%. Being right, 66, 67% of the time, is not enough to profit long term. You're not having a major loss, but you're losing money. Let's get it. See, there we go. We go up to 78%. Now you're looking at a winning track record, but at one point you were down about 19%. Okay, what I'm illustrating here is that for some of you who answered that poll question and said you lost money and you need an explanation why, even though you may have been promised 3 to 6% returns per month or higher annualized returns using weekly covered call positions, you still need to be right 75, 77, 78% of the time in order to profit long term. Well, is the goal to control losses more? Sure. But if I set a loss limit at 5% from where I opened a covered call, I'd probably be stopped out of positions more often. So I wouldn't have. 73, 75, 77% winners, it'd be much lower. Now, even though my loss is lower, it might not be a winning track record. 50% of you doing credit spreads, and I'm doing that in my personal account as well with maybe 15% of my allocated funds to options investing. What do we talk about when we look at an out-of-the-money spread position with a good 75, 80% probability of expiring worthless? Well, I might expect on a two to three week out trade that I can get somewhere around 12 or 15 percent leveraged return. Maybe making 25 cents on a two dollar spread, for example, or taking in about 55 or 60 cents on a five point spread, It'd be about a 15 percent return. Now, the loss limit. I can't set a stop order of 7 percent on my spread. So I'm probably already at a loss of at least 7 or 10% when I open the spread position based on the bid-ask slippage of the two options in that spread. I don't want to close out if I just take a 10% loss on 25 cents. That doesn't give me much wiggle room at all. And naturally, we want to avoid taking the full loss. If I had a two-point spread, I don't want to take the full $2.25 loss, or a $2 loss on the position, do I? No. I'm going to try to stop that at around 50%, which still gives me some wiggle room and gives me maybe a trigger to manage the position. But in general, let's say that we're right 15% of the time. I'm sorry, our target return when we're right is 15%. We're going to set a stop at 50%. So if we did a five-point spread, we'd only lose 225 or 250 and so forth. But we're looking for a higher probability. We want to be right. 80% of the time or more. Okay, well, let's start off with $10,000 and I'm going to invest it there. Now, this would be a great track record if you're right 86% of the time. I mean, look at that. 
if you're right 86% of the time only took 14 losses you know you've almost increased your portfolio by tenfold at one point so at a positive return but just being right 82 to 18 still above that 80 percentile you did extremely well you doubled your money perhaps and I can show you weekly returns, records of the weekly return on the bull put credit spread screen on power options. But again, let's do this one more time. Winning track record, but at only 70% with this win-loss ratio, you're almost bankrupt. Over 100 trades. I want to get to a good range here. There you go. I look for positions, bull put spreads that have a 75 or 78% probability above looking to make 15% on a leverage return and even setting a stop at 50% of what I invested into each position. And maybe with $10,000 I'm allocating 50, I could break this down lower, of course, to say I'm allocating it to four trades where I'd put in $2,500 into each, so we'd only invest 25% into each trade. But here is the lie of leverage in action. When you look for positions that have an 80% probability, you're close to a 9 to 1 risk reward ratio. One trade at full loss is going to wipe out 10 previous positions. Two losses, even at a 50%, is going to wipe out 10 previous positions. And this shows you that you can be right 78% of the time and still see a large loss. Even when you're looking for positions that have an 80% probability, you need to be right 81 82, 84% of the time, long term, in order to profit. And the drop off is quick. If your percentage just drops down to 78%, you could be looking at a losing track record, even though it's only two points off the average probability you were looking for. That's where the lie of leverage comes into play. And that's why the spread trades, even if you were right 75, 78% of the time over the last 12 months with your bull puts, bear calls, or even iron condors, you might not be as head as much as you expect, even with trying to control the losses beyond the full amount. Okay, so this is sort of an answer to those of you who said that you lost money and you want an explanation why. It could have been that you were over trading as we mentioned before, but this also illustrates that it could be the structure of the trade, that even being right 75, 80% of the time, when you were looking for positions that had the best probability, or maybe you even use delta to find positions that you're looking for, you're still not ahead because you needed to be right more often than you thought. Okay? So that's where we stand. We saw what our returns were across the group. We saw what strategies we were trading across the group, and we saw, based on the trade simulator, those of you doing covered calls and naked puts would have the same win-loss ratio in a sense, as well as the credit spreads, which also apply to condors and more, why you might not be making as much as you originally anticipated in those positions. So what's going to happen going forward? If you continue down the same path, you continue the same strategy based on what the market has done in the last six months, eight months, 12 months to 24 months, do we feel we're going to have the same return? Every day now, you guys get the same thing. You see the same emails I see from other options services, um, forced posts onto your iPhone from Wall Street News, other things of that nature, Investors Business Daily. What are we seeing? Well, there's naturally several different articles and discussion on policy reform, tax reform, and more. Who said what on what social media service, which is a little bit ridiculous in my opinion going forward. But at the same time, you're also seeing a discussion of should we cash out now? Is the market due for a correction? Does it need a breather? And at the same time, you're seeing the same articles I'm seeing. Is it too late to get into cryptocurrency? What is the next Bitcoin? What is the cheaper, newest cryptocurrency available for you? All these should flash off warning signs that there's thoughts in many places of what's going forward into the new year. And regardless of if cryptocurrency continues to move up, regardless, 
of what happens in the next 30 to 60 days, what happens with policy, the fear is justified. The thought is out there. Remember at the beginning of December, in the first five days, we saw the NASDAQ drop almost 200 points. It was close to it. Now, it recovered from that five days less than that. It was like, you know, the next five, 10 days, it recovered from where it had dropped. But not all the stocks in the NASDAQ did. I'm in one of them. But think about those of you doing the credit spreads, especially those of you doing weekly bear calls, weekly bull puts, and more. If you had a spread position that was looking really good that you had opened seven to eight days before this decline, and your expiration was in that five-day time frame, you watched a winner go to almost 100% loser before you could probably control it and close it. Even if you were in the monthly December series for against NDX or in a NASDAQ stock, you probably saw the same thing but had more time to manage it only to see the position, the underlying return to where it was by the end of the standard cycle or close to it. Headline risk is not a new thing, but it seems like it is a more realistic and more prominent event. We all might be tired of hearing about it, but any news article that gets posted gets picked up by other news services immediately. Everyone wants to be the first to disseminate information. It's there and it's quick, and it's there and it's quick without research and analysis. And we saw this a week and a half ago, didn't we? An article came out that caused the market to hiccup, and then it was proved that it was not researched, not analyzed well, and everything just recovered. Well, it's great that everything recovered. Did a stop get triggered? In your account, were you triggered at a stop at that point? Did you look at the market in the morning and fear, wait a minute, what's going on? I need to adjust this. Headline risk is real, unfortunately, because too much information is coming out too fast without proper analysis and research. I'm not going into a dissertation about how that's good or bad. What's bad is it affects you and I. You and I are here to trade the market. You and I are here to trade options. And we're here to do our best research and analysis to find a position that matches our sentiment, matches our goals, and matches our return. I don't want some outside force from some person who's respected but didn't research an article to see two positions of mine hit a stop. That didn't happen to me. I might sound bitter, but it might have happened to you. And I don't want to see that happen to anyone for something that isn't real. Okay? We all know going forward, what we saw in the last 12 months is not what we can expect for the next 12 months going forward. But we can't have this fear dictate our trading or dictate our greed. Now I know, you never lose money by taking out a gain. <laughs> Meaning that if I close out for a gain right now, there's no chance I'm going to lose money on the position. Okay? The closer you are to retirement, the less you want at risk in the market. You don't want to hope that the market continues in the same direction it did, but at the same time, you don't want to miss out on further returns, if possible. We still want more, okay? We know that. We want more. We had good returns last year. Most of us, 83% of us, had positive returns, okay? We want more. That's the greed, but we want good greed. We want greed going forward that's protected and can either stop us from losing more or lock in much of what we expected. Now, how do we do this personally? Here at Radioactive Trading, we take a different approach to what many of you might be doing right now based on the poll responses. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing right now for most of you. I do, as I mentioned, I do spreads. I do diagonal calendar spreads. I do long straddles and long strangles in my portfolio as well as the radioactive trading techniques. But the approach for radioactive trading is rather than look immediately for income with assumed insurance, think about what I just showed on the trade simulator tool with covered calls and setting a 7% stop. And that only hopes that your 7% stop is triggered as the market declines. 
If it happens in the pre or after market hours and there's a 30% movement in the underlying security, you don't get filled at 7%. You take a 30% loss, whatever the market offers it open. That's a problem because in that ratio, you just skewed the average loss on your positions from 7% in that covered call strategy, maybe up to 10, 11, or 12%. Now you need to be right maybe 85% of the time on your covered calls in order to profit long term. Leverage premium, credit spreads, debit spreads are fantastic. Even 15% returns on some weekly spreads, but we already showed that even if you think you have a 75% probability, long term you need to be right 81, 82% of the time in order to profit long term due to the lie of leverage. So I want to focus on limiting risk first and then allow the upside to run. But with the structure we're going to talk about now, I can put that in place to fight the fear and embrace my greed going forward while still being able to regularly apply the same transactions of an active options trader. I'm going to be able to sell calls against the structure. I'm going to be able to generate income on a regular basis. I can also include what we call riskless spread trades. I can trade a bear call credit spread or a condor or a broken wing butterfly perhaps inside this structure nested in the larger trade without taking the margin risk requirement of those positions because of the biggest structure. All right, I wanna show you what we do in action. How do we fight the fear and embrace the greed in action? Here's a chart of Planet Fitness, PLNT. Now let's say in this position we see that we've had a large move here helped by a positive earnings on the position up here. But let's say we got in around August at about 24.60 or so. So we would have got in maybe right around this point in the position. I'm sorry I didn't have the month selected here, but this is, would be uh, June, July, and then August, and so forth, okay? So let's say we get in at 24.60 in our position. And now we're sitting on a stock that's currently trading at 34.15. So we have an underlying gain of almost $10, about $9 and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there are $9.50 or so, 55 cents, 38.8% gain. And we're heading into the unknown of 2018. There's no earnings coming up on this position till March. So we're not going to throw that in the mix right now. We're not going to talk about that really. There's no planned event for the stock coming up, but the market itself is the great unknown, the fear of the unknown that we have going forward. And what is that fear? When we talked about it, market conditions may change. The stock could give back more than 50% of the gain. You know, if the market takes a breather and we lose 10% on the broad-based indexes after over the 15 or 20 or 25% gain in some cases over the last 12 months. Well, I'm not saying the stock's going to fall 50%, but it could fall four or five points back to $30 per share. That gives back close to 50% of the unrealized gain we have right now. Oh, we still have a good profit. We still be around 19% gain on the position, but can we fight that fear? which might cause us to cash out now, miss further upside. We still participate in further upside and still actively trade. Well, a popular idea for most of the investors, a lot of the investors in the room who were doing income strategies might say, well, one of the ways to just fight the fear is hedge it, take a little bit of profit now by selling a call, take that stock, create a covered call position, generate income. I could sell the out of the money January 35 call. This is around 3 o'clock, 2.30 Eastern time today for 62 cents. Now, if the stock continues up, I get called out at 35. Well, we're going to make about a 46% return on the position. We get 35.62 back on the investment. We originally saw a 24.60. That's fantastic. But we didn't really hedge much to the downside. Now, I could put a stop in again but that's assumed insurance. And remember, if Planet Fitness continues the growth it's shown, since it's strong earnings and going forward, 
buoyed up by the rest of the market, which is also showing that movement, I get nothing beyond $35 per share. So then you might say, well, let's be more conservative, Mike. That's aggressive. That's out of the money. You're only generating $0.62 cents to put your new cost basis and your new break-even at $23.97 at this point. Let's do a little bit better. Okay? Let's go a little bit in the money. Why don't we sell that January call but sell the 30 strike, $4.15 in the money, and right now we could get about 4 30 for it. Well, this lowers my new cost basis to $20.30. Remember, we put in $24.60. I'm now down to $20.30 on the position. The potential return is about a little bit higher. It's 47.8% on the position. We get a good lower break even down to 20 30 well, there's still a chance to give some back. If the stock falls down to 30, we're still looking pretty good, though, aren't we? If it goes down to 30, we might still be a sign. If it goes to 29, we're still at essentially an $8.70 profit on the position. But again, this gives us a hedge. This lowers that cost basis, but it doesn't leave the upside open. I'm kind of fighting the fear by taking a quick protection. And you can add a stop again to control this too. We don't have to worry about a loss until it goes to 2030. But if I set a stop here at 28 and the stock gaps down, remember, to 25 overnight, not likely to happen, but we've seen it happen on other positions. We know it could happen. We don't get filled at 28. We get filled at 25, whatever the market is offering with either our trailing stop or the stop order in place. Okay, so that's only a profit now of $4.70 still 20%, still pretty strong on the position, okay? So we can look at that and say that's a way to fight the fear, but really, selling a call at this point is actually more to the greed. It does offer some insurance in the form of the premium, and then we talk about adding just a trailing stop, but that's assumed insurance. Remember what we saw with NASDAQ in five days? Now, we dropped 200 points from about 2,600 to 24, but with the stop in place, you don't control it. It's really a market order saying, get me out if it's anywhere below this, and if it's a quick sudden drop in that position, you have no further say. You're closed out with any further input on the position. You'd still be out of profit, though. But it was more greed to generate the income up front to lower the cost basis and accept no further upside, okay? So if I want to control that, I want to control my greed, rather than put my stops in control of the market, place a stop and say, market, you control if I get out of this position at what price you deem is fair because it's being offered at that time. I want to control personally how, when, and why I exit a position for profit and for loss. So my approach on this scenario, to lock in the unrealized game, to fight my fear of what could happen next, but still embrace the greed of Planet Fitness maybe going to 38 or 39 by end of January or beginning of February, I'm going to buy a May 35 put for $3.30. Yeah, it was offering the same time we saw those call premiums. Now wait, why am I adding money to this cost basis and adding to the risk because I'm not adding to the risk in this case what I'm doing is locking in the gains of an underlying security by buying the put I am guaranteed to get $35 back no matter what happens between now and May expiration in any situation the worst case scenario is a gain of 25% now, you can argue that if you just sold the 30 call, you'd make about 47.5% by lowering your cost basis, and the stock would need to fall four points or more before you didn't realize that 47%. And I'd agree with you in this case. That is very true. But if the stock goes up to $38, $39, $40 for the next 15, 20 to 30 days, I missed more of that upside. Still a fantastic return. Do not get me wrong but I'm missing out on that return because I capped the gain to the upside. By buying the put, do I increase the cost? Absolutely. 
you see on the right hand side there my cost basis is now 2790 from 2460 so I increased the cost but I did it to guarantee a greater payback and the worst case scenario as I mentioned is a return of 25 percent now notice that red line the red line is at the halfway point between now and May expiration at March 6th so I can still realize reasonable profits even if the stock goes up to 35 you see that we're making about 915 I'm not locked into only a 25 percent gain that's only at March expiration I'm sorry May expiration 150 days away so I'm going long term here now this sets me up to fight the fear I have no fear crossing earnings on March 1st I have no fear of a market correction because I'm guaranteed 25 percent I doubt it would ever happen to a stock like this but if Planet Fitness had something major happen and opened up at 15 you would get filled on your stop at fifteen dollars not at 29 not at 28 you get whatever the market is at that time at the open after the event I still have a guaranteed exit of 35 that I control and I can decide to even stay in the position and hold it or make other adjustments with the stock down that far holding the stock and the 35 put now if the stock stagnates where it is that's perfect I can still sell calls against that protected structure lower my cost basis and lower the guaranteed return but I still have more upside I could do those riskless spread trades some of the other income methods we talk about at radioactive trading where I don't take on the margin risk that I normally would by just opening a bear call spread or a ratio call spread but I can still take advantage of the upside potential of those positions and the income from those positions because of the proper protected structure I can cross that earnings now I'm guaranteed a profit of 25 percent or more I can withstand any five-day blips where I might have been pulled out by my stop as we saw at the beginning of the Nasdaq in December because I control when I exit the position not the market makers not my broker because I put in a stop I control the outcome and the timing and when I want to make any adjustments to the position now why would I even consider buying a May put for three dollars and thirty cents well it's because you get what you pay for okay most of our audience is generating income one way or the other with covered calls credit spreads condors and so forth from our first poll but when you're generating income you're most likely looking at weekly options two weeks out three weeks out maybe you're doing monthly positions because when you sell week by week or month by month you know you're increasing your annualized returns and that's what your goal is you also want less time for the stock to move in your direction but when I'm buying an option whether it's a speculation of buying a long call for a stock I feel has good growth potential or buying a put maybe ensuring a portfolio thinking SPY may decline or something along those lines or I'm buying a put to ensure a stock position that has an unrealized gain I'm lowering the annualized cost when I buy far out in time the same principle that applies to why we want to sell income closer in reverse of that is why we want to buy options further out yes I'm paying more up front I'm paying into time premium but because it's far out in time that time decay is more slow and the option that is five times the amount out in time is not five times the cost that January 35 put the at the money put 31 days out in time one month out on Planet Fitness is a dollar 45 the May 35 put we looked at is 150 days out crosses an earnings event and is only three dollars and thirty cents so it's a little bit more than twice the cost of the near-term option but it gives me five times the amount of time for the stock to move in my desired direction now I'm in a structured trade where going forward over time I am insured to a profit of 25 percent I've left the upside open and can still choose to do other adjustments realizing the worst I could do on the position is a gain of 25 percent 
I fought the fear going forward into 2018, and I'm embracing the greed, and I am in control of it 100%. Now, did I cherry pick a position? Well, not exactly. Where I sh what I showed you is where most of us might be right now. And, you know, I mentioned that I get phone calls and emails, of course, four or five times a day, uh, well, seven times a day, or seven to ten times a day for phone calls, a little bit more for the emails. But I, I have people asking me, you know, I bought Apple at this price. I have a covered call on MU that I'm up 27% on. Should I just roll the call or take assignment and move forward? I had an investor the other day say so he was up 28% doing bull put spreads in the last nine months. What strategy should he approach going forward? Should he continue bull puts? Or should he move into something else? Because the truth is, if we see the NASDAQ, the SPX, and so forth, and the Dow drop 5% in the first month, add another 3 or 4% in the next month, so from January to March of 2018, he could give back that full 28% in just a two-month period. That is very possible, the lie of leverage. He would have to see the signals, change the strategy, but there's also no guarantee that if the market started bouncing around, we've seen that before in the past three years, haven't we? Where one morning the SPX is up, let's say, 2%, and then the next morning it's down 2.5%. Then it's up 1%, then it's down 28 If you're trying to bounce between bear call credit, bull put credit, bullish to bearish with your spreads in those positions, especially if you're doing weeklies, you're probably hitting a stop every day on each one and try to move to the next one and that's not going to get you ahead at all you're taking losses too often and too fast as we saw earlier and that's why you're getting behind so some of us may be sitting on a good pick or some of us may be in a position where we've got a good gain on our portfolio and we're considering what do we do now going forward do we close now take the profits wait for the market to show its hand well, that's sort of falling into the fear factor isn't it you're giving into fear at that point Again, I mentioned it earlier, and I'm not oblivious or naive to this. No one ever took a loss by taking out a gain. There are people who are staying in cash right now to see what happens in the next four or five weeks going forward to gauge the market and then come back in. But that is kind of falling into fear. It's not embracing the greed. Sell a call now or take some of your gains from your spread positions and buy into a conservative blue chip dividend stock and sell calls against it. You ward yourselves with premium. Well, we saw the pros and the cons of that. Gives you premium. Lowers your cost basis. Gives you more downside protection, but doesn't give you further upside if the market does continue on the way that it has been in the last 8, 10 to 12 months. Do nothing and hope the market continues up. Hell, that's up to you. <laughs> you can do, you can absolutely choose to do what you want to do with your money because it's your money, you've earned it, you've got the gains. But hope is not the place where we want to be. Hoping that the market's going to continue on is not acceptable. Or can we guarantee control, exit, and still have more upside potential? Obviously, you know what I'm going to can choose. But the other factor here is, isn't putting money into that position or taking my profits and buying stocks that are bullish now and insuring it so that I couldn't lose more than four or five percent. Isn't that throwing away money? Well, I don't think so. I had a position two years ago on Iconics Brands, ICON. And the time frame I was holding the position, the stock dropped 66 percent and I was long stock the entire four and a half month time period. I closed the position with a four percent gain. That's not great, but it's not throwing away money. It didn't meet my goals that I have for a basic radioactive position, what I look for on the time frame and the gain, but that wasn't throwing money away on that position. The structure allowed me to control the risk, and there are adjustments that we talk about in the blueprint of the 12 different income methods we discuss that you can actually have a gain if the stock continues to decline. Okay. So that wasn't throwing money away from me at all. If I had opened Icon as a covered call position and followed it those four months trying to generate income without just getting out, I still would have been a loss. Best case scenario in the first month would have been a loss of about 22%. Now think about this. The way the lie of leverage works is if you have a 10% loss on a position, you don't need a 10% gain to get back to break even. 
has to be 11%, 11.1%. So if I had $10,000, put it into a position, and the underlying fell, and I'm closed out for a 10% loss, I have $9,000 left. Well, if I reinvest that 9000 I don't need a gain of 100 or 10%. That only gets me to 9900 I need a gain of 11.1% to get back to break even. If I take a loss of 25%, I need a gain of 33% on my next position to get back to break even. If you take a 50% loss, you need a 100% gain. And now if I had stayed in a covered call on Icon and followed it down to the 66% loss, this still would have been a loss of about 58%, 56%. I would have only gained 10% in premium. So I'd have needed about 120% gain on my next position to make that back. Okay, I was able to close it with a 4% gain. But I want to talk about a loser. Let's talk about Planet Fitness and what we really did. So did I cherry pick the Planet Fitness trade with a cost of 2460? Well, no, I showed you the stock chart. If I was cherry picking, I could have showed you getting in at 2320 or $23 in June or July of that year. But on August 29th, Planet Fitness was a radioactive trade that I opened in my personal account and was posted to our Fusion subscribers at Radioactive Trading. We bought shares of Planet Fitness at 2460. And at the same time, in August, I bought the February 25 put, which is at least 150 days out in time, for $2. So I increased my investment into the position up to 2660. But I'm guaranteed $25 back. So the most I risked when I opened this position from the start was $1.60, or 6% of the total investment. Now, right here is another factor. Let me go to the next screen. 17% of you earlier on said that you were, you lost money last year and you want an explanation why. Remember that other slide when I showed you that we all have the same goals. We want to make consistent profits, but we don't want to overtrade or overinvest. The structure that you're seeing here, the married put position, the stock and put combination, where I've controlled the risk to single digits in the absolute worst case scenario. The stock could fall to $10 per share. I am guaranteed to only lose $1.60 of what I invested, or 6%. Now you'd say this profit and loss chart is the same as a long call position. Maybe you could have bought at that time, on August 29th, a February 25 call on Planet Fitness for $1.60 or $1.70. You know what? You'd be right. Let's say we both had $10,000 accounts. And let's say I didn't want this to represent more than 1.5% or 2% of my total portfolio value as far as the risk goes. Well, that would dictate I'm only buying 100 shares and one put. So I'm risking 160 in a total $10,000 account. And yes, I put in about 25% of my total amount into that investment of 2660. But I can only lose 160 or 1.6%. And you'd say, I can do the same thing with a long call. Well, sure you can, in theory. But now the live leverage kicks in. You see my position, you have a similar $10,000 account. Would you buy one call of the February 25 strike on Planet Fitness for $1.70? Or would you buy five calls? And then use more of your money to buy three calls on stock XYZ, four calls on stock 123, and so forth. Now, what happens if most of those positions, those long calls you opened, even on August 29th, you use a trailing stop, of course, but most of those positions you open were heavy into the NASDAQ. And NASDAQ had a five-day drop, as we saw in December, to take a breather because of things that were going around about the tech sector and so forth you might have lost 60 to 70% and been stopped out on those overinvestments into the long call. This forces you into an ideal size trade where you can't overinvest or overtrade because we're buying the stock and buying the put. The long call has a similar risk reward profile. I'm not arguing that with you, but they're not quite parity trades. Okay? But what is this structure I'm looking at here? It's fighting the fear going forward even from August, as it was opened as a new position, not as one that already has a gain, but how I open any radioactive trade. I'm immediately starting with a controlled risk 
and I've got unlimited upside. And again, notice that curved red line. I opened the position here in, um, I'm sorry, August 29th with the February expiration, so the midpoint would have been around November 1st or so. But notice that here on the curved red line, even if the stock was trading just above the strike price at the open of 25, we would be at a profit. Yeah, I invested 2660. And you could say I'm not going to make a dime on this strategy until the stock goes up to 2660. That's only if I held it all the way to February expiration and did nothing on the position. Because I bought it far out in time, time is on my side. And the time decay is slower. I can actually realize a profit if the stock moves up 20 cents. The next day after I open this position, I'll have a 10 cent profit. But again, that's not my goal. All right. So what does happen as a new position? Or if I already had a gain in Planet Fitness and I locked it in. Well, two months into the trade, the stock's now up to 29.85, a gap up due to earnings, which we saw in the previous chart. Okay. And I had no fear if there was an opposite, if there was a five-point drop or six-point drop on the stock because I had the put in place. But did I throw that sixty way I invested in the put, that original 25 put, now that the stock's up to 29.85? No, not all of it. Two months into the trade, when the stock's gapped up to 29.85, my February 25 put was around 35 cents, 40 cents. Right? So it's almost five points out of the money now, but it still is value. That's important because I did lose a dollar twenty-five on the position. I'm sorry, I lost two twenty-five, right, on the put. We paid I'm sorry, no, we paid two dollars for it originally. I apologize. Remember that put was two dollars originally. So I have lost a dollar sixty-five on that put option. But the stock moved from twenty-four sixty to twenty nine eighty five. I gained 525 on the stock to give up 165 on the put. That's a fair trade-off. But I thought there was more upside. Turns out I was right in this case. So the February put was trading at 35 cents. The February 30 put was now trading only a dollar ninety-five. So I can actually use this the original put. It's not just insurance, it's a second asset that I own that I can manipulate, and we move that up in price. This is called income method number four. So what is the outcome of this? I pay a small debit in this situation. I paid a debit of 160, sold to close my put for 35, bought another put at 195. I add a debit of 160 into the position, but now I'm guaranteed to get $30 back instead of 25. I gain five points of guaranteed exit for a cost of 160. That's a positive trade-off of 340. Now at this point too, just like you covered call sellers, I sold a call against it, got about 65 cents, and then towards expiration I bought it back for 20 because I didn't want to give up the stock yet. So my new total cost in the position, the original 2660, which included the stock and the put, 160 to move up my put from the 125, I'm sorry, to the 25 to the 30, minus the 45 cent gain from selling the call, my new cost basis total is 27.75. But I'm guaranteed to get $30 back on the position. So now what do I have? I have what we call a bulletproof trade. I have absolutely no risk on this position. A guaranteed profit, even if the stock falls back to my entry point of 24.60, of 8%. And I still have unlimited upside profit potential. Now, as soon as I did this, am I out of the position and the best I can hope for is a gain of 8%? Absolutely not. You see, the stock did continue up. We left the upside open. I have a liquidation on the position right now of about 25.5, 25.4%. Now, I didn't take full advantage of the stock moving up, the 38% or so that the stock is up, but I can't give any of it back. I'm guaranteed to make at least 8%, even if it goes back to my cost basis for the position or lower. Okay? You could roll higher and lock in more. 
I could do this again and roll up to the 35 put, and the Fusion subscribers are going to see an adjustment on Planet Fitness, if not this week, then early next week after Christmas. Be a little Christmas present there for this adjustment on the trade. I could actually take all of the money out of it and still take advantage of further upside by converting this into a different strategy as well. Guaranteed profit of a higher return. I have no fear of earnings. Market changing in January, market changing before January, a black swan event coming tomorrow or just after Christmas. I hope we don't see that, and I'm not expecting to see that, and I'm not doom and gloom. But I am in a trade now. I'm in a structure going forward where I've locked in the gains. So I'm locking in most of the unrealized profit I had in a position or from other strategies that I traded in a portfolio to move forward. And at the same time, I'm still embracing the greed where I can take further upside as the stock continues to move up. I can continue to be an active trader just as we all are, selling more calls against it to lower that cost basis increase the guaranteed return or bulletproof status and look for higher liquidation return moving forward. But let's think about that initial structure that we showed. Remember our benchmarks for covered calls and spread positions, meaning that on a covered call with that trade simulator, if I was looking for a 3% max return if assigned with using a 7% stop order, we need to be right 72, 73% of the time to profit long term where the structure of the leverage spreads, those looking for the 80% probability or higher, we saw that we needed to be right almost 85% of the time on a consistent basis to profit long term. Now what if we looked at that structure, that trade simulator tool a different way, where let's say on any position, I guaranteed that I couldn't lose more than five or five and a half percent on any position, and still averaged a gain of 7% or so. How often do I need to be right in that scenario? Well, let's go back and let's take a look. Okay, so we'll go back now to that trade simulator tool at radioactivetrading.com. And once again, we're going to change our structures for the position. I'm going to say I'm looking for an average target return of only 7%, and I'm going to control my loss to only 5%. And at the same time, I'm not going to claim I'm right 80% of the time. Let's say I'm right only 50% of the time. Again, I take a $10,000 account and I allocate 50% or so into each trade. So two married put positions with this potential structure. I'm leaving the upside open to see more gains and I've controlled the downside risk. Wow. First one that appears is we were right only 42% of the time. 42 wins, 58 losses, and at one point we had a positive record, but guess what? We're still at a loss. Took our $10,000 after 100 trades, it's trading it, our portfolio's worth 97.67. So I lost $233. Not happy with that. But I was wrong more often than I was right. Here I'm right 56% of the time. Winning track record, pretty decent one. And you can see that over 100 trades, if I'm averaging 7% on my winners when I'm right, and I'm controlling my losses to 5% when I'm wrong, being right just a little bit more often, 56% of the time, $10,000 account could almost double after 100 trades. Now let's just go a little bit lower here. Here's an interesting one. With the simulation, random wins and losses, I could actually be wrong more often than right. Now at one point I would have had a loss about 8 or 9% as the account dropped down to $9,100. But you can still have, after an extended period of trading, a successful trading record. Now my goal is not to be wrong more often than right. What I'm attempting to illustrate for you here is those of you who have questions of why you didn't make as much as you expected to make in the last year. With the SPY essentially moving up a few hundred points, and we saw that with SPX earlier too, and the NDX even having that five-day down drop in December is more than recovered 14, 15 days later. 
is that it's not necessarily that you were losing too much or winning too much. It's the structure of the trade that can hurt you. You can be right 75, 80% of the time, but with an improper structure, you can still lose money long term. You can be promised that you can generate regular income with covered calls and make 3 to 6% return per month doing certain strategies such as that. But if you're not right, we already saw that. If you're not right 75, 73% of the time on a consistent basis, you will lose money. This is the only strategy I know of, the only structure that avoids the lie of leverage. Well, this and standard collars, that might be another topic for another time. But this one here leaves the upside open unlike standard collars, where I can consistently see gains in this type of rate. And I know I've controlled my losses to this type of average. And actually, the track record there that showed on radioactive trading for my portfolio is that I'm right about 60, 61% of the time. So long term, I'm expecting reasonable gains on what I invested. It might take longer. I admit that 100 trades, doing 100 trades in a radioactive portfolio is going to take longer than doing 100 trades in a weekly bull put. <laughs> I might do 100 trades in a weekly bull put portfolio over the course of 50 weeks. Okay, That's not going to happen here with radioactive trading because you're not giving yourself enough time. But the structure of the trade allows you to win even if you're wrong more often than right, which is for the 17% of you that said you were losing money and you want an explanation why, it's due to the structure of the trade. And the only strategy I know of that I've tested and I've traded where you can win just being right 50% of the time is the proper structure of the radioactive trading technique. So unlike the covered calls where we needed to be right 70% of the time, or unlike the, I apologize, unlike the covered calls, for example, we need to be right 70% of the time, 72% of the time are the spreads, which applies to most spreads. We need to be right 82 or 83% of the time to profit long term. We can see how the structure of controlling risks to begin with can result in better performance long term. Now, Arvind asked a question earlier. He's a Power Options member. He says, can you please let me know where I can find the weekly option recommendations? Well, yeah. You go on to Power Options. You have a trial account to Power Options. You log on and you go to Covered Calls. You'll see the default covered call picks of the day, weekly or monthly, and same with Naked Puts. We already saw the structure there. There's also, you could go into Bull Put Credit Spread, and you could see the default screen for weekly bull puts. Now, I can discuss the returns there. They're very good for what Ernie tested historically, what I tested historically, and posted for the bull put weeklies, what he did with the weekly covered call and the naked put picks of the day and so forth. But consider what we saw in the market. What was the chart? Rising tide lifts all boats. Okay? I can't promise that that's going to be the same return going forward. You know why I can't promise that? Because I have no guarantee of what the market is going to bring in 2018. I don't expect the same run in 2018. It could be better. It could be worse. I don't know. I can't control that. I can't control what's going to happen in the market, how the market's going to react to any of those outside factors that we talked about, that yes, the fear is justified. I'm not predicting when that might happen not going to do that to you. And I'm not predicting really it is going to happen. What I know is that I'm going to go forward into 2018 fighting the fear with a proper structure and embracing the greed while still leaving the upside open. Now, of course, even if you're not trading stock right now, as many of you are trading spreads, and that might represent a large bulk of your portfolio, wouldn't you like to protect your gains going forward? Wouldn't you like to consider taking some of those gains that you have there and moving into stock positions where you know that you could still realize further upside, but you have control on the risk as well? Now, I am here to give you an idea. I'm here to tell you what I do, and I'm here to try to tell you something that can help you going forward that over the last year, we got away with focusing on income generating strategies 
bull call debits, bull put credits, covered calls, maybe even naked puts and more. But I can't guarantee you're going to be as profitable. And I showed some ideas there, some explanation for the 17% of you that said you were losing money in the last 12 months. You wanted an explanation why. It might have been because of overtrading. It might be because of the structure of the trade where you were promised that weekly spreads are a strong position where you can have 80% probability of success and earn 15% or 12% on five-day trades. Well, guess what? You actually need to be right 84, 85% of the time in order to profit long-term. It's a hard structure. That's a hard win ratio to get. Now, I don't want to see you. I want you to win. I want you to win more. <laughs> I want you not to give back what you gained in the last year or not to see you lose going into the next year. I don't want you to see you give in to fear and halt your greed. Not when there is a way forward where you can avoid that and still take advantage of more gains without giving back what you've already gained. Now, our full technique, the proper initial structure of the radioactive trade I showed that I opened on Planet Fitness. The 12 different income methods that are used, why are there 12? Well, some are best used if the market moves up or your securities move up from when you got in. Some are best used if it's stagnating, if it's not quite doing what you want in the first 20 to 30 days. And there's other adjustments you can use if the stock falls, where you can actually profit to the downside, as I mentioned with Icon being down 66%, and we got out with a 4% profit. That's all available in the blueprint and every year we want to end it with a bang and make it easy for you to fight the fear and embrace your greed going into the next year so our special end of the year offer for the educational product at radioactive trading the blueprint ends on december 31st and we don't discount the price of the blueprint at any given time the cost is still $339 for the blueprint, but what we promise and what we do is if you pick up the blueprint before December 31st at midnight, you're also going to receive five special bonuses. That Fusion subscription I mentioned, where you can follow along with my radioactive trades, Ernie's radioactive trades, and you'll see anytime we make an adjustment or an income method, you can get your first two months of the Fusion subscription for only $10 per month. It's usually $69. You're saving $118. Fusion subscription also includes lessons that were put together to help you master the material in the blueprint, the radioactive trading techniques, a search tool to identify your own radioactive positions based on the criteria that we've used and that we use to open our own positions as well. One of the mastery series videos, there's Five or, there's six mastery series videos that are included in the big product, the home study kit. But if you pick up the blueprint before December 31st, you'll get one of those videos for free. The Foundations of Radioactive Trading, usually sold at $89. That's yours free. You saw some screenshots today of power options that I mentioned. We also offer search and analysis tools for 22 other strategies beyond married puts in the radioactive techniques, you'll get a free month of power options, which is a $60 value. A while back, we put together what we call the quick start guide to help you get started more quickly as you're going through the material of the proper structure of the radioactive trade and the ins and outs of the 12 different income methods. You'll get the quick start guide free. That's a $50 value. Anyone who picks up the blueprint between now and December 31st, or is an owner of the blueprint as of December 31st, even if you bought it six years ago, we're going to put a new mastery series video out focusing on the latest income method, income method number 12. Blueprint owners are also going to receive access to that mastery series video when it is completed in mid-January. That's usually sold for $89 as well, so you'll receive two of the seven Mastery Series videos for free. We've got an additional video here. It's a collection of uh, four or five of our most popular archived webinars. Uh, what we call the FIST video, that will send you for free as well. Of course, anyone who picks up the blueprint or is a member of Radioactive Trading, you get email support for free. Questions on your position? Should I apply an income method now? I'm looking to open a new Radioactive Trade. 
I opened a radioactive trade, it's not working out how I want, how can I manage the risk here if the stock's not moving? Phone and email support is completely free. In addition to that, the blueprint is a full, robust, physical product, strength physical product that we're going to ship to you. Normally we charge $11 for shipping and for international it's as much as $60 or so for the shipping. During the end of year bonus we're going to waive shipping. So the price of the blueprint is just $339, no shipping. And that being the eighth bonus, you still get seven other bonuses for free if you pick up the blueprint between now and December 31st at midnight. Two of the Mastery Series CDs, the first and the last one, right there alone, that's a value of $180. First three months of Fusion, first two months of Fusion, I should say, for, 100, for only $10 per month, that's a $118 value. So right now, you're already up to about $290 of free bonuses with just the first three. Now, I throw in that free shipping, that's another $11. So that's $300 worth of bonuses on four of the eight bonuses that are available, almost equivalent to the price of the blueprint itself. So where can you learn the proper structure to limit risk without hedging yourself too far and without taking on too much risk to properly structure the trade, how we do the 12 different income methods, when to apply them, how to not apply them so you don't accidentally get yourself in trouble and take advantage of all these eight bonuses well, after the webinar, you want to read more about it, what's offered there, what this can do for your portfolio, go to radioactivetrading.com slash EOY and be able to place your order there as well. You can also email me anytime with any questions you have about today's presentation or the radioactive trading techniques. Send me an email to support at radioactivetrading.com. Also, you can call us during market hours. You can reach us toll-free in the U.S. at 877 9927971 uh, if you live outside the US you can actually reach us at 302 9927971 you're also going to receive an invitation for me to a webinar on Thursday probably be at 12 noon eastern time the Thursday webinar is going to be what is possible with radioactive trading i'm going to show you even more in depth into the structure itself the income methods how you can turn those positions quickly into profit the benefits of bulletproofing your trades to where you have no risk on your position, even if you opened it from scratch. It's still very possible to bulletproof your trades, have no risk on your positions going forward, while still being able to apply other techniques to generate income, lower the risk, and increase your profits. So look for that. We'll do that Thursday at 12 noon Eastern Time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me this afternoon, this evening. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your trading week. We did archive today's presentation. I'll also let you know when this is available in the archive so you can watch it, review it at your schedule, maybe get some other information. Remember, give me a call, send me an email with any questions that you have. Remember that special offer for the Blueprint ends on December 31st at midnight. So go to radioactivetrading.com slash EOY take advantage of those eight special bonus offers which monetarily are more than the cost of the blueprint to begin with the blueprint itself of course is 339 but no shipping whether you're international or local no shipping charges on that for the end of year promotion plus the other bonuses as well I hope to hear from you soon and regardless if you follow my advice or follow my suggestions I hope you all have a profitable remainder of 2017 an extremely profitable 2018 we'll see you soon good night